What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. Just a quick disclaimer before we jump in. If you struggle with existential dread, I would maybe recommend skipping this video entirely. When you start questioning things like your reality, your free will, and what it means to be truly conscious, you start finding gaps in the story, questions that can't be answered, and things that cannot be explained. Today, we're going to be exploring some of those questions and diving into the mystery of the simulation theory. Before we get into the simulation theory, let's first establish what reality even is. The dictionary definition of reality is the world or the state of things as they actually exist. In our reality, humans live on a spinning, floating rock in an ever-expanding sky. This floating rock just so happens to contain all of the necessary elements, chemicals, and conditions needed to cultivate intelligent human life. We are governed by political, economic, and social systems that provide order and dictate our day-to-day -day lives. Some of us have jobs, some of us are still in school, and some of us are creating silly YouTube videos. Although each of our realities are unique, influenced by our own individual experiences, we all exist in the same plane of reality. The simulation theory suggests that this reality may actually be part of a computer-generated program. Think of role-playing games like Stardew Valley and Sims. These universes exist in a computer simulation where we, the player, control the avatars in the game. Now take that concept and apply it to our real world, where now we are the avatars who live in a simulation created by an even more intelligent species in another universe. Nick Bostrom, a professor at Oxford University, is credited with popularizing the modern simulation theory through his 2003 thesis, Are You Living in a Computer Simulation? Why do you think we might be living in a simulation? Well, I have this thing called the simulation argument, which doesn't actually prove that we're in a simulation, but it tries to show that at least one of three propositions is true. First, humans go extinct before they're able to create a simulated reality. Second, as an advanced civilization, we are capable of running a simulated reality, but choose not to. And lastly, we are already living in a computer simulation. As Bostrom suggests, we can't prove that we are living in a simulation, but we also can't disprove it. So instead, we're gonna explore some of the strongest arguments that support and debunk this mysterious theory. The first piece of evidence that supports the simulation theory is the observer effect. The observer effect is a fundamental concept in quantum physics that suggests just watching or measuring something can influence the outcome of the thing being observed. You've probably heard of the thought experiment, if a tree falls in a forest and no one is around to hear it, does it actually make a sound? This question is a quintessential illustration of the observer effect. Scientists have conducted several experiments throughout the years to explain the observer effect, most notably the double slit experiment. Now, I'm not going to go into too much depth about this because I'm definitely going to butcher it, but if you're curious to learn more, I highly recommend you watch this video, which explains it really well. Essentially, in this experiment, researchers shot particles like electrons or photons through two narrow slits onto a screen. When not observed, the particles create a wave-like interference pattern on the screen. However, when observed, they behave like individual particles, creating two distinct lines on the screen. The only thing that changed in these two scenarios is the presence of an observer. Why this happens still remains a mystery in quantum physics, but the takeaway sounds pretty supernatural. That's what you get. Make them think that you're still detecting them. So, yeah, 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 okay, we're gonna run the experiment, atoms, okay, get ready, one at a time, we're gonna be checking on you. <laughs> All right, so, run the experiment again. <laughs> now, if you can explain this using common sense and logic, <laughs> do let me know, because there's a Nobel Prize for you. Particles behave differently when they're being watched, as if they know that somebody is analyzing them. Supporters of the simulation theory interpret this experiment as evidence that reality is merely a rendering, and our universe only materializes once it's been observed. We'll have to 
have all the world existing there at all times, right. that might be an unrealistic amount of computing power. Right. You just need- Enough the, of the world that they see around them. That they see around them. Right. So you want to start digging. and oh, that's so funny. And haven't put the earth there. Just, there's a flag that goes up in the programmer, and they say, oh, need more earth. And so, right. so they put earth beneath you while you can keep digging. Many people also use this to explain how a civilization could create and maintain such a complex and vast universe. By only rendering bits of the program at a time, the computing power needed is cut down massively, a point we'll get back to in just a bit. Going back to Bostrom's second argument that we, as a modern society, might not choose to create simulations doesn't seem likely considering we're already very much on this path. With the explosion of artificial intelligence and growing popularity for technology like virtual reality, we are simulating parts of our world every single day. And this technology is only getting smarter, better, and faster. In just a few more decades, we could be creating AI so advanced it is capable of having sentience, or designing virtual realities that are indistinguishable from real life. If we don't go extinct in the next few decades, like how Bostrom's first argument implies, and we continue to develop technology to the point where we are creating full-blown simulated realities, Bostrom's third argument may still be a possibility that we are already living in a simulation. Now you're a character in that world and you think you have free will and say, I wanna invent a computer, so you do. Hey, I wanna create a world in my computer. And then that world creates a world in its computer. And then you have simulations all the way down. So now you lay out all these universes and throw a dart. Which of these universes are you most likely to hit? The original one that started it? Or the countless simulations, the daughter simulations that uh, unfolded thereafter. So either we are all living in base reality, sort of like the first doll in a matryoshka set, or we are just one of many existing layers, nested in a larger doll. The odds that we're in base reality is one in billions. The last piece of evidence is less scientific and more of just a weird phenomenon in which a large group of people remember an event or occurrence differently than how it actually happened also known as the Mandela Effect. Some popular examples include the Bernstein Bears, which many, including myself, distinctly remember it as the Bernstein Bears, or the Monopoly Man's non-existent monocle. Proponents of the simulation argue that the Mandela Effect shows inconsistencies in our reality caused by glitches in the simulation. Other glitches in the matrix have been documented and recorded, especially with the rise of smartphones. Weird occurrences that bend the laws of nature and can't be fully explained by physics or science. And lastly, there's this sensation of deja vu, or the feeling that you've done something or been somewhere before, even though you haven't. Some speculate that this eerie feeling is also due to potential glitches within our simulated reality caused by alternate timelines or the simulation correcting itself. Though a lot of these weird occurrences have logical explanations, some people do look at this as solid proof that we are in fact in a simulated reality. The arguments against the simulation theory are a little bit more straightforward. First off, we don't know what makes us sentient. What is a soul? What is consciousness? These aren't scientific concepts that you can easily replicate through formulas and algorithms. If that was the case, modern day technology would look very different. But let's say, at the very least, we try to replicate the computing power of a human brain. This would require a computer more advanced than we've ever come close to creating. The human brain is incredibly powerful. According to the National Institute of Science and Technology, our brains can perform one quintillion mathematical operations per second using only 20 watts of power. For comparison, the most powerful computer in the world, the Oak Ridge Frontier, required 20 megawatts to achieve the same level of computing, a million times more power than the human brain. Now imagine having to create a simulation that not only simulates one person, but over 120 billion people. The computing power needed to run this type of programming would be astronomical. If you want to simulate the weather, for example, you have to simulate the motion of trillions upon trillions of atoms. No computer is that powerful that it can simulate the motion of trillions and trillions of atoms that just make up the atoms in this room. You can't do it. Going back to the observer effect, although automatic rendering could theoretically save computing power, 
It still doesn't explain how a computer program is able to replicate things like human consciousness and the intricate laws of nature. He implicitly claimed that it's easy to reproduce the foundations of physics with something else. But nobody presently knows how to reproduce general relativity and the standard model of particle physics from a computer algorithm running on some sort of machine. And sure, maybe an advanced civilization has been able to figure it out, but science tells us that it's very unlikely. At least for now. And lastly, probably the biggest piece of evidence against the simulation theory is realism. When an action can be observed and replicated over and over again with the same result, it's considered to be a fact. The sky is blue. We need oxygen in order to survive. The society on Netflix should have never been cancelled after just one season. In this context, metaphysical realism refers to the idea that objects have a definitive state regardless of human observation, a notion supported by many great philosophers and scientists including Albert Einstein and Aristotle. Our vast and wonderful universe expanding light years through space all exists, every star, every galaxy, every corner and crevice, regardless of whether someone is physically there to observe it. Though this doesn't directly disprove the simulation theory, it does counter one of its biggest arguments. There's the philosophical principle of Occam's razor, which suggests when you're faced with multiple explanations for a phenomenon, the simplest explanation is usually the best. The tree does make a noise in an empty forest because through repeated experimentation, it's never not made a noise. Although it can be fun to consider other alternatives and it is important to question everything, the explanation that requires the fewest assumptions is generally the one that we should be leaning towards. The biggest thing that gives me comfort when things feel scary and existential is simply the question, so what? So what if we live in a simulation? As far as we know, this is our reality. And I don't say that to sound nihilistic or naive, but rather as a way to focus on what we do know and what is within our control. At the end of the day, you will always be you with your complex life and thoughts and dreams and aspirations. That does not change and will not change whether or not we live in a simulation. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what your thoughts are down below and I will see you next time.